Welcome to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and as I like to remind you each and every week, I'm also the author of uh, Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks. That's a weekly and monthly newsletter. And my company, Taylor Hard Money Advisors, is in partnership with Chen Lin, who publishes What is Chen Buying? What is Chen Selling? And to sign up for my letter or Chen's letter, go to miningstocks.com. Right now, I'm really happy to tell you that Michael Oliver is with me. Uh, to give us his views on the equities and precious metals markets. Thanks for joining me again, Michael. Hi, Jay. How are you doing? Always good to have you here. I'm doing well. Uh, you know, gold is up and uh, the equity market's down. I don't know. That's not any reason to be happy. Uh, but at least my personal portfolio is doing a little better in the early days of this of this year. Uh, let me just tell my listeners again, it's OliverMSA.com, Oliver. M is in Mary, S is in Sam, A is in Albert dot com to keep up with Michael's work and also hopefully to subscribe to his service, which is excellent. It's a can't miss service, and I look forward to it in my inbox uh, almost every day. Michael sends something along. So, Michael, on February eighteenth, you expressed uh, concerns that those who might be shorting the equity market might have to give some of that back, and you were definitely right. We've seen uh, we've seen uh, some strength in the uh, in the equity markets, the S and P and the S and and, um, and the Dow, uh, but uh, we're running into a little bit of trouble now. But but in any event, what did you see back then on February eighteenth that was uh, convinced you that uh, uh, that uh, the shorts might have a little tough time of it for a few days? Um, it hadn't been talked about much then, but the Shanghai meeting of G20 coming up on this Friday and Saturday and the panic tone of many of the central bankers who were going to attend that meeting, uh, it's clear it's not a routine meeting. These guys are scared, uh, and they should be scared because the mm-hmm. yen is rallying sharply, and that's not what the BOJ wanted. Uh, equity markets, developed equity markets, uh, UK, uh, Europe, Japan, and U.S. are rattled. They are more rattled than we are, by the way. And that, therefore, upsets the central bankers. So they're in panic mode. Well, as an investor who believes in those things, I don't, but there are a lot of them that do. Yeah. That's their faith structure. That's their reason for being long. The central banks will print equities higher, and they, in fact, they did from 2011 through 2015. But that's coming undone. Um, and it's coming undone in, in ways that make them nervous. Therefore, investors who hope for you know another blessing from above, they... they would naturally want to buy in front of that meeting. And sure enough, they did. And I think that's probably the largest motive of power behind the market in, in, the last, in this last week's rally. Uh, from a point of view of momentum work, the rally was fully justified as a failing rally, not a succeeding one. But it, it, uh-huh. the rally itself was, was anticipatable uh, to some extent and also had some negative implications in it because it set up Sometimes rallies are bearish because what you do is you establish something below you a couple times. And once you do that, you establish a clear structure, what I call a structure. And when we rallied this past week, we got enough upticks to where I can now point down on my momentum charts at levels below us that if you go back there a third time, it's what's called a triple bottom breakout. Mm. And in order to set that up, you have to have the rally first. So to some extent, as a bear, I cheered the rally. Huh. Uh, however, it's getting time if one covered shorts to some extent in preparation for the rally to start redistributing. Now, it's possible the rally could get higher, take out the 1947 price high early this month, which we did not do yesterday, uh, and get up into the 1960s, 1980s on the S&P. It's possible, but I don't guarantee it. So if you want to be short and did cover, you want to start redistributing, I think, here and there. Mm. Oh well, we certainly we're seeing as I'm looking on the screen now. The Dow is down around a, around 200 today, and the S and P is getting whacked pretty hard too. Uh, do you think this rally then it's it's probably about over? And then that's what you're saying, I guess, that people ought to start looking back at the short high, side. Yeah, I think that yesterday's high at 1946, a point short of the high of the month, which happened to be the peak of a rally. Uh, that that was pretty much. Uh, took the air out of the rally. It could go further, but uh, basically I think most of the sting has occurred. Um, and so if one wants to be short the S&P, I mean, there are better things to do that can make money even more than a short S&P position. But if you want to be, you need to be, reconsider reinstituting positions or adding to positions on this rally. Yes. All right. All right. Well, well, like what? What would you say you can you can do better on than, uh, than oh, the S&P? I think gold and gold miners in particular will beat the pants off the S&P in terms of percentage possible gains versus the short gains on the S&P. 
Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to just stop you there because on, the, on February 18th, you said, and I quote, what I would focus on most intently now is gold. Its action was pr- picture perfect. So I would like to ask right. you, what was pic- picture perfect about gold? Well, What's, what has you so well, our excited? Recommended, our recommended buy signals based on annual momentum and quarterly. These are long-term buy signals. These are not short-term uh-huh. trader signals. Occurred sure. in the 1140s and the 1160s. Within a week, the market hit 1260. It backed up from 1260 back under 1200 within a matter of days and spiked to the downside. Then uh-huh. it returned back up to 1240, and now it's quietly nesting 1220, 1230 zone, which uh, I believe that rush to 1260 is setting up a price chart feature, which I seldom pay attention to, but it's now apparent even to price charters, a channel top at around 1260. And I believe this channel top is coming out because momentum equivalents of this price feature have already come out. And so I think just a matter of pausing below that 1260 level, congesting, and when you go through to 1260, in fact, I think if you even touch 1260 again on the nearby mm-hmm. contract, and I would consider that to be April gold right now, mm-hmm. if you trade 1260 and you're bearish on gold, I think you better cover fast. And if you think gold has negative implications for the S&P, which I think it does, uh, I think that implies the S&P rally is over as well. So uh, right now gold is uh, $20, $30 below there and quiet, but it is holding well. Same mm-hmm. can be said for the strong yen futures, mm-hmm. which are coincident with gold. So right. uh, I, I, I like indicators to mutually uh, reinforce one another. I don't like just looking at one market in and of itself. Right, there are other, excellent. You know, other, like side, side, side view mirrors, if you will. <laughs> yeah, sure, not just the rear view mirror. Yes, that's excellent. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I mean, I couldn't get over last week, I think it was when we talked to you, you weren't going to layer in. You were all in, essentially. So uh, obviously the commitment is there on your part. You really believe that we've seen uh, that we are in the process of a turnaround in gold, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this, this should the 11, 40, be... the 1160 to... zone, that, that did it. For me, that did it. And then, and then 1260, we could be looking at something in the 1400, mid 1400 range, something mm-hmm. like that? I would set that as my next layer once you clear that 1260. I think your next uh, working target, not the end of a bull, but a, a layer of resistance is around 1450. All right. Well, a technical analyst friend of mine uh, who talks frequently on Al Corlin's show uh, says that he thinks we have a few more days of, uh, you know, of relative strength in gold here, and then we're going to see some weakness heading into the early days of March. I believe, uh, Michael, that your more, your viewpoint is longer term than my uh, than my other mm-hmm. technical friend, who's in and out of the markets frequently. Uh, so I guess you wouldn't be uh, at all dispirited by some weakness in, in early days of March in gold. No, uh, we've already had one heck of a bout of weakness right after we hit twelve sixty. The market dropped sixty nine dollars. Drop yeah. to eleven ninety one. So we've already had that, and we could have have another little bout of weakness. Uh, con- part of the congestion process here is possible. However, I would caution: if you touch twelve sixty again, don't bet on any weakness. I would assume right. going going right then. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Well, it certainly uh, it certainly do you do provide some hope for those of us who have been uh, long suffering bulls in the gold sector. So I want to thank you again. Uh, we we want to know the truth, not just the good news. And I know you're always there to tell us that, Michael. You tell people things they don't want to hear as well as things they do want to hear. It's based on the numbers and the objectivity uh, that you bring with you is is much very much appreciated, Mike. I want to thank you again for being with us once again, and uh, hope to do it next week. Good, Jay. See you then. Thank you. 